Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Make an Atari 2600 Game. In this episode I'll go over all of the progress I've made since the last episode, and also some of the problems that I've been having, uh, and challenges that I've overcome so far. So the most obvious change here is that uh, it has a title screen now, uh, and a name. I'm calling it Under the Castle, uh, and I've made that title screen there, a little bit of with the lightning animation in an old castle and on the bottom there is the entrance glowing inviting you to uh, probe the depths. So this is pretty cool but the uh, the title screen there it takes a lot of space it's something like two or th two thousand I don't know it's something like 2k of ROM space and that's not ROM space I have can afford to use really but it's so cool so uh, I'm keeping it and you know, I might be able to squeeze out this, I might be able to squeeze this game out in the tiny amount of space that I have still. All right, so here's my game. Now, first of all, uh, since the last time, um, I've animated the monster. So you can see the, the blob there, he sort of animates. He doesn't move very quickly. And that's another change I've made. Uh, the monsters all sort of have their own properties now. They have, they can be, you know, different speeds. They can have different attack power and some of them can shoot range things like this blob. Um, so I'll just kill him before he kills me. Right, so the blob is dead. In addition to the monster animations and attacks and everything, I've also added inventory management. Uh, that was one of the things I was worried about in the last video, how I was gonna fit it in with everything else. And I've, gone a, I've done a pretty basic version of this. So basically what you do is um, you hold the fire button down and then if you press up or down it will change you know the item in your inventory so there's a sword I have and here's a, a potion and so the inventory also has different categories two categories you have your weapons in one category and you have your items in another so if you press left and right it just switches categories so I'm in the items category if I press left and right it switches automatically to the weapons so I can select what I want to use. Um, yeah, so he has a sword. It does more damage than the bow, but the, the drawback is you have to get in close to attack the enemies, for example. You have to walk up and hit them. Um, the potion is one is a one-use item, so if while I'm still in inventory mode, if I have it selected and if I let go of the fire button, it will use it immediately. In this case, it's a heal potion. Um, so I let go of the fire button, I use my heal potion, and it returns me to the, whatever weapon I had you know, wielded, so you don't have to keep switching back. So if you want to use an item, you can just, well now I don't have it anymore since so I've used it. Um, if you want to use an item, that's how you use uh, instant use items. There's also items that uh, you can use more than once. So you see my health is going down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Now if this blob kills me, uh, you can actually die now. So. I'll just let him kill me and I'll show you what happens. All right, so he's killed me and I'm dead. So that's the death animation and it just, it throws you back to the, the title screen. Uh, so I don't, I'm, you know, maybe collecting treasure and things will, will give you a higher score. I'm not really sure yet. So you can die. So I'm dead, I'm restarting and we're back, right. Uh, okay. Now another thing I've added is treasure, but it's in the lower levels. It's not very common to come across it. Oh, that was interesting. A little bit of a bug there. Okay, so here I've happened to, uh, upon a room that has a treasure in it. Um, to pick up items, you just walk over them. But this item in particular, you don't hold it in your inventory. You collect it, and it will increase your score. Um, but the score isn't tracked, so it basically does nothing. But you can pick it up. There you go. You got it. The deeper you go in the dungeon, the better treasures you'll get. And the better weapons and the better items. But I only have a few test things in at the moment. So there's nothing really to look at. It'll just be that chalice again somewhere if it turns up. So what I've added now is that you can die. Uh, there's a title screen. You can change items in your inventory. You can pick things up. Uh, you can use things. And uh, you can also change characters, your starting character, but I haven't put a way in to actually do that uh, from the main menu yet. Maybe I'll just use that K 
game select switch for that. Now the problems I'm having right now are the game is just processing too much for the Atari to handle. You only get about two milliseconds to execute all your code for that one frame. And uh, my game is now really pushing the processor to its limit. So here, here is an example of the, the processing problems I was having on a real Atari. Alright, so here's my game running on a real Atari. And right away you're going to be wondering why it's in black and white. Well, that's because my game cartridge is um, NTSC, which is the North American and Japanese standard. And my console is a European console, which is expecting a PAL game. So um, it, doesn't, it doesn't get the color information. But that's okay, we're not interested in color at the moment. Um, what I want to try find out is if my game runs smoothly on a real Atari without bouncing and jumping. Now I happen to know this one does, this version does. Um, see so even with three here, there's no problem. There's no jumping. But now that I've added a lot more logic to these monsters, unfortunately, I think it's going to bounce all over the place. I've been trying to solve it with the emulator, and I'm just not getting anywhere. I need to come up with a radical new idea. Okay, so here's the new version. So far, so good. Oh, see? That's bad. That bouncing. Two. Yeah, it's bouncy. It starts bouncing with just two monsters on the screen. When I go diagonally is when it happens. If I go straight up and down, and left to right, it doesn't seem to bounce. When I go diagonal, it starts bouncing like crazy. I'm only going to be able to process one monster per frame, so I think I'll alternate them. And I'll see what that looks like. And maybe if I can just do one monster per frame, it doesn't look like it bounces regardless of what I do. So I'll try that and see if it doesn't look too weird. All right, so here's the game running at 30 frames a second. And you can tell right away it's a lot slower. Uh, that's because these games are sort of tied to their frame rate. And so you can see there's absolutely no trouble at all with Flickering, bouncing, I mean it's flickering, but it's not bouncing uh, at all. This gives me a lot of room to add more processing. As long as I can get everything nice, smooth looking. I mean, on the screen, the, uh, it looks so terrible on a real Atari um, based on a UK. I mean, I've got, a, <laughs> I've got an Australian television, a UK console and in the United States game. So this is the best <laughs> best screen it can come up with. Um, I do have a United States Atari, but it's, it's not here yet. So when it arrives, hopefully it'll be in color and look a little bit nicer than this does. So what I've had to do is I've alternated what frames these, these actions happen on. So on one frame, the monsters will get their AI. And on the, on the opposite frame, like the animations and things like that. So since they're never running at the same time, it's almost like flickering in code where, you know, if you have a, uh, if you have a sprite on the same line, they flicker. It's almost like flickering code in the same way. So, um, let this ghost chasing you around. I love that animation that I made for that, that ghost. He looks really hungry. And, uh, so that was a big challenge. Uh, another challenge is the title screen taking up so much space. I'm down to about 5k left. I won't be able to use all that. And I can't use it all in one big block either. So I have to be very careful with how I, how I use it up. Um, I've got to add a lot more monsters and items and things like that. And that's slowly going to eat away at that 5k. And I also have to add sound. I haven't even looked at sound yet. So hopefully sound doesn't take a lot of uh, ROM space. So that's where I stand right now. It's actually a game now. You can die. Matter of fact, you will die because, well, there's no end. So eventually you're going to be killed. I just have a few things left to add before it's complete. For example, 
how to finish the game and win the game and maybe a, a transition from levels so maybe showing your your character walking down a staircase or something like that when you go through the level so it doesn't just appear as a whole new dungeon and a lot of polish maybe new dungeon colors and visual effects and things like that whatever i can fit in 5k so that's it for now um it's very close to being finished at least preliminarily finished 